I'm afraid Ben Davidson, aka Suspicious Observers, has uh, done it again. He's come out with a new video claiming to disprove global warming. But before you listen to my video, perhaps you should look at his video. It is called The Top 6 Climate Change Problems. And here's the link shown here in blue. He cites lots of papers and other sources that he claims support his case, which give the impression that he's doing something sciencey. But he isn't, and I'll show you why. Well, how does science work? Well, first of all, science generally starts with a question, and you generally formulate a hypothesis around that question. You then develop an experiment or make observations to test that hypothesis. You analyze the results and come to conclusions, which usually lead to more questions and new hypotheses. This is not what Ben is doing. When you're presenting a scientific case, you're supposed to first present the evidence on both sides of the issue. Then you cite previous work, both pro and con to your particular point of view. And then present your conclusions and logical argument as to why you came to those conclusions as opposed to the conclusions that others have had in the past. Ben presents a biased case. He only shows one side of the global warming argument. He ignores the overwhelming evidence on the other side. His arguments are not self-consistent and he claims the support of papers that actually contradict his conclusions. Well, they say consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. That's actually not the full quote. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at uh, how consistent his arguments are. He starts off by stating that he believes that the Earth is warming, that humans are in part responsible and pollution is bad. And I think we can all agree with that. However, they then, for the rest of the video, tries to prove that the Earth is not warming and it's the Sun, not humans, that is to blame. That is a logical inconsistency. Well, what are the six points of his video? First is that the climate is changing unexpectedly. Don't trust what you hear, and that should include what you hear on his channel. The next part is entitled The Future is Uncertain. He then goes back to the old chestnut that the entire solar system is shifting. I'm not quite sure what he means by shifting. And the sun may dictate our future, which of course it will do, but not of global warming. And someone is screwing with the weather. And so these are the six parts. And as there's so many problems with each one of these parts, I can't do it all in one video. It would take hours. So I'm going to deal with the first one here. The climate is changing unexpectedly. So what is so unexpected about the changes in climate that we have observed so far? Esso claims that the climatologist said that there would be no more snow and ice. Now, I, he actually doesn't give a, re a reference to that comment, but I suspect, having looked on Google, he's referring to the comments by Dr. David Viners in 2000, which uh, has went viral on the internet, saying that there would be no more snow and ice. The only problem is that Viner never actually said that. His quote, talking only about England, I'll remind you, was that snow is starting to be disappear from our lives and could become a rare and exciting event. But there will be occasional heavy snowfalls that will catch us unprepared. Now, why didn't Ben give the whole of that quote rather than just the uh, bumper sticker uh, line that has been used on the internet to uh, demonize uh, Viner's comments? He then goes on about the hiatus. We are now approaching nearly two decades of failed global warming predictions. His source for that is an article by a British lord with no scientific training and a BA in classical literature, i.e. Greek and Roman mythology. Munchen shows this graph as evidence of the hiatus. Well, this is a piece of scientific myth mythology all in of itself. First of all, if you look at the details of the plot, you'll see that the plot is actually for the lower troposphere, not for surface temperature, which is what we deal with when we're talking about global warming. Secondly, look at the carefully selected start and stop times. They're chosen to give a zero value trend. If you look at the whole uh, data set, as I'll show you in a second, you get a very different picture. And thirdly, this R squared equals zero is very worrying because R squared equals zero means that the trend line does not fit the data. So now let's take a look at the real picture. If you look at all the data, this is the same data, 
plotted by the people that actually uh, run the experiment on the satellite that, that Moncton and uh, Suspicious Observers is, is talking about. And in fact, two of them are very well-known climate skeptics. But this is their plot. And it shows a tr an upward trend over the last uh, 30 years of about 1.12 degrees Kelvin per decade, the same as centigrade. So why didn't Ben include all of the data? Because it doesn't suit his agenda, is the answer. Well, the true science behind the so-called hiatus, well, there are some very good talks about this from the American Meteorological Society co conference. I've got the link of it to it here. And there's a very nice summary that Meal uh, puts out in, in paper 1.1 of that, that session, uh, where he points out some of the problems with this hiatus uh, argument. First of all, during the period of, of global warming over the last hundred years, there have been several such hiatuses. Uh, where the uh, rate of global warming is apparently stopped or slowed at least and he points out that they are the result of changes in the way that the heat is stored in the earth's oceans that mostly the heat is stored at the surface but every now and then some of this heat is pulled down to deep inside the ocean and that causes one of these hiatus and he shows evidence that this is actually happening right now so uh, I really advise you to take a look at that session. If you can't look at the whole session, look at least at the meal talk. Model problems. All 73 cli UN climate models are wrong, uh, so Suspicious Observer says. The only thing is that the models being used here are for global surface temperature, but the, the data they are being compared to is for the tropical mid-troposphere. So you're comparing something global over the whole planet at the surface with a small part of the atmosphere high up above the tropics. And you can go look at the CNS, CNS News uh, link here, which Suspicious Observer cites, but it actually clearly says that. This is not like comparing apples with oranges, but apples with elephants. It's a shameful trick, and so why is Ben making such shameful tricks when uh, he knows full well that this is not comparable data? Ben is also on thin ice with this Arctic sea ice. The Arctic sea ice area is well above the record lows of the 2013 uh, and 2014, while the Antarctic continues to set record highs. That's true. But the only problem is that the total sea ice area continues to fall, and the sea ice volume, which is by far the most important, is dropping in every month of the year, as you can see here uh, from the biomass data. So how could Ben slip up on this again? Again, he's following an agenda rather than the science. Then the bit I love the most is these secret volcanoes. The Western Antarctic is melting rapidly due to a system of large volcanoes under the ice. That part was not in the news. This refers to a paper in Nature by Lofetal, 2013. He doesn't actually reference that. He references a magazine article that is just a summary that, of this paper. and It's not a very good summary, I might add. The paper is about the discovery that some of the Antarctic volcanoes may still be active, but it says that there is no evidence of recent activity. But it could increase the water flow if it ever erupts. And here's the link to that particular article uh, in Nature uh, below. So the reason why it was not in the news, Ben, was that it wasn't true. Then we get into the record cold, record heat thing, which he's done before, but let's expose it one more time. He shows this map to claim that more low temperature records were set than high temperature records. OK, let's take a look at this. First of all, note three large states have record high temperatures in 2014. No states show record low temperatures in 2014. That would be a much darker blue, the one on the furthest left. Note that five states had, temp had temperatures much above average, and they're quite large area states. Nine states had temperatures much below average, and it's about the same area as that. So overall, the heat wins. But then he really tries a, a really dirty trick. He says, look here, not elsewhere. Two counties in the United States recorded the coldest temperature they've ever recorded for 2014. Two whole counties. This proves that global warming isn't happening. However, if you look at the big picture, what happens? Yes, there are two counties that have shown record cold, but there is the whole of the state of California, parts of Oregon and parts of Arizona 
that have uh, shown record highs for 2014. So, Ben, again, I ask why the deception? Why do you need to keep deceiving people with, with parts of the uh, picture and not the whole picture? Because you don't have a case otherwise. But how many highs and lows globally were there? Over the last year, there has been over 75,000 new daily high temperature records set, where there's only 55,000 new daily low temperatures records. So that means that the warming trend is the winner. Now let's take a look at monthly. There have been nearly 3,000 monthly high temperature records set in 2014, whereas only 1,472 monthly low temperature records set. So once again, warming wins. All time highs, which is a very difficult record to break, there's been 131 of them uh, for high temperatures, but only 51 of them for low temperatures. So again, uh, warming is the winner. Overall, heat wins. So the argument that there have been more cold days than warm days is actually incorrect. Then we get into this whole uh, chestnut about the budget. 20 billion dollars are being spent on uh, global warming. Well, actually, uh, the 3 billion that he talks about for research is an exaggeration. It's only 2.6, and that's a proposed budget, not a real budget. And most of that doesn't actually go to the scientists. A very small proportion of that goes to the scientists. For example, in my own field, the Solar Dynamics Observatory costs nearly a billion dollars to build, and the scientists are getting about four million dollars a year to analyze the data. So look at the ratio of actual money that goes into a mission, missions, which is what this is, compared with how much money actually goes into the research. It's minuscule. And also, the, the vast majority of this funding, uh, about 16.2 billion, goes to industry, uh, and mostly the fossil fuel industry and agribusiness. So this is not going to global warming. This is subsidies being tax subsidies being paid to industries which I think should be ended right now. Well, here ends our first lesson. So in summary, at least for this first part, SO's video has been shown to be, and there's no surprise things here, scientifically inaccurate, deliberately deceptive, and biased. Stay tuned for part two if you want to hear about what you can't trust that you hear.